Hi, this is Warren Redlich. I'm really excited about uh, something Elon Musk said about Raptor production. The Raptor is the engine that will be powering Starship and Super Heavy, the larger rocket that SpaceX is building now and quite possibly Starship 2.0 that Elon hinted at coming in a couple of years or longer. And what he said that really stood out to me was he said in a, it was an exchange of tweets in June between Everyday Astronaut, one of my favorite YouTubers, and Elon and somebody else. They were talking about Raptor production and Elon said they were aiming to get to 500 Raptors a year production soon. 500 Raptors a year. That's a lot of Raptors and that led me to think about this question. What is SpaceX going to do with 500 Raptors a year? That's so many Raptors. How do you apply that? What, how many rockets, do, how many boosters, how many starships does that mean? And what do you do with all that? I think that's a really big question, so let's talk about it. So really quick, what's the Raptor? The Raptor is the new rocket engine that is going to power Super Heavy and Starship. We've seen it uh, demoed or tested, um, and in particular was used in the Starhopper uh, test flights that were just done recently. It is expected that it will be used in uh, Starship, uh, early Starship prototype launches coming up in the next month or two. And long run, um, it's the big engine that's going to be powering a lot of the future rockets for SpaceX. And just for comparison, the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy that you've seen SpaceX launch before, the famous launch where Falcon Heavy put Elon's Roadster up into trans-Martian orbit or an orbit going out towards Mars. Um, that was all done with the Merlin rocket engine, an earlier engine that SpaceX produced, which is a great engine. Um, there's a lot of differences between Raptor and Merlin. Um, my impression is that Merlin, that Raptor has some key advantages. The biggest advantage is that it uses methane. And if you're going to fly to Mars and try to come back from Mars, or the moon, in theory, we will be able to produce some of the fuel on the moon or Mars, which means we don't have to fly the, the fuel to the moon or Mars in order to come back, we'll be able to produce the fuel there. Um, so that's a big factor, but if you wanna learn more about the Raptor engine and the differences between Raptor and Merlin, um, I really recommend Everyday Astronaut's channel. He has at least one, maybe two or three great videos on Raptor and maybe some more on Merlin. So, with Starship and Super Heavy, it was originally thought that Super Heavy would have 31 Raptor engines and Starship, I think all along, has been expected to have six Raptor engines. The, at, another big tweet that Elon had was he said that they now thought Super Heavy would have 35 Raptor engines, which means more thrust. It means Super Heavy is, Super Heavy is able to get the upper stage going even faster. The goal is to get the second stage Starship going as fast as possible so it can get to orbital velocities more easily, uh, which getting it out, speed is what matters in order to get out of Earth's gravity well. So 35, uh, um, 35 Raptors in Super Heavy and then six, maybe there's a hint they're gonna go to seven in Starship. And just to give you some sense of what that might look like from the bottom, of the uh, rockets. You can see how you might squeeze 31 or 35 Raptors into the bottom of Super Heavy, how you would fit six Raptors into the bottom of Starship. And keep in mind that there are sea level optimized versions and outside Earth's atmosphere, space optimized versions of them. The kind of, the way you want the engine to operate differs at sea level when there's all this atmosphere and uh, around the, the rocket, once you get up into space, things function a little differently. And so the size of the bell that goes around the, that at the bottom of the engine can be different from sea level, again, from sea level to space. And again, everyday astronaut would be able to explain that much better. I'm pretty sure that's in one of his videos. So one of the most interesting things about this is when you're trying to figure out how are you gonna use 500 of these Raptors, you start with Super Heavy at 35 and uh, Starship at six or seven, and you get to 41 or 42. Again, that gets you to maybe 12 um, Super Heavy Starship combinations, but I don't think that's how it's going to work. Super Heavy is going to be much 
easier to reuse because although it's doing a lot of work, it gets up to a much lower velocity overall than Starship will get to. Um, it suffers much less stress in the re-entry process. It's going to get up to, I'm guessing, 80 or 90 uh, kilometers uh, before it releases Starship. I don't know what the, the profile is planned to be, but that's what's typical for a Stage 1 and a Falcon launch, Falcon 9 launch. I th and its, its mission is much shorter. The Super Heavy mission is only a few minutes. It gets the stage uh, Starship or Stage 2 up to a high speed, and then it comes back and it lands, or maybe it lands on a barge. Um, so it's done in a few minutes. It can be back, ready to go in a day or two. Um, you know, in Elon's optimistic time frame. But it should be that we, we will be able to use fewer Super Heavies, and you end up with a ratio of maybe two or three Starships per Super Heavy. Um, two or three stage twos for every stage one and I like it's easier to just think about two to one So if you think about it in that context ten super heavies would be 350 Raptor engines and then 20 uh, Starships would get you to 120 uh, Raptor engines and you're getting close to that 500 number so that's one way of thinking about the production. That means there's 20 Starships operating, which is pretty amazing. Um, you know, Super Heavy launches, comes back, you stack another uh, Starship on top of it, it launches again. And just the idea that there's gonna be 20 of these huge spaceships operating is fantastic. Now I'm gonna get ahead of myself a little bit here. In a previous video, I talked about Starship 2.0 because Elon, in a more recent tweet, said that the next version of Starship will be 18 meters in diameter, twice the diameter of Starship, the current version of Starship. So if you imagine that you're going to be using the same Raptor engine for Starship 2.0, and I'm not sure that's the plan. It's, some people have suggested, no, they'll use a larger version of the Raptor engine for Starship 2.0. We don't know that. For now, I'm thinking, well, if you're going to be building 500 a year, I don't know that there's a reason you would want to use a larger one unless there's going to be some big efficiency gain from building a larger one. And if they're spooling up production and it's going well, if there's not much gain to go into a bigger Raptor, just go with the current Raptor. So you figure 100, anywhere between 100 and 140 Raptors in Super Heavy, the second version of Super Heavy, and 20 to 24 Raptors in Starship 2.0. And now you've got 100 and 30, 120 to 160, let's say, Raptor engines in one combination of Starship and Super Heavy 2.0. If you use the same model of you're doing three Super Heavies and six Starships, let's say, or four Super Heavies to eight Starships, that gives you an idea of how you can use 500 Raptor engines a year in producing that kind of volume of engines and what you can do with it in terms of rockets, uh, boosters, and, star and spaceships operating up there. And the big thing about version 2 is with that added thrust, uh, hopefully greater efficiencies in launch costs per what you're putting up there, the ability to carry more cargo or more people um, per the amount of fuel, um, that Starship 2.0 will be able to do a lot more in terms of missions to the moon or to Mars. Um, so that's where I think that may be going. From an economics perspective, what SpaceX is doing is truly revolutionary in terms of changing the opportunity for humanity to become more active in space. If you go back to the beginnings of the rocket industry or the early rocket industry, launch cost per kilogram was very, very high, maybe $10,000 a kilogram to get something into low Earth orbit. Um, and now we're looking at uh, a dramatic reduction in cost with Falcon 9. Once you get to reusability, all of a sudden launch cost goes down so dramatically. Just going to private sector, smart um, budgeting and, and uh, operations, you get a lot of efficiencies. But then that next level of going to reusability and launch costs have become so much lower. So one of the interesting questions from an economics perspective is supply is increased. The cost to the manufacturer to make the product or the serve, provide the service of launching something into space has gotten much less. And what you would expect from an economics perspective is, well, then people who want those services, you would picture a demand curve that 
there would be a lot more demand at a lower price. And I, it's one of the things I've been wondering about, where's the demand? We've seen this dramatic reduction in launch cost. Why aren't we seeing more companies, others coming up with ways, well, now that it's so much less money to launch something into space, and maybe it's waiting for Starship uh, to get operational and lower launch costs further. Maybe it's waiting for Starship 2.0. But at some point, you would expect that demand to kick in. Um, and this is why this is so important as you get those launch costs down. And I just personally think there's a lag that people who might not yet realize how they can use this service are starting to come on board. And it just takes time for that demand to, to funnel in. And that could be one of the things that fuels the need for so many Starships, so many Super Heavies, and so many Raptor engines. Now, as far as demand goes, uh, there is one company we know that has a high demand for launches, SpaceX. SpaceX is going to put its Starlink network up. Uh, it has already started. Um, I think everything that's been launched so far is really more of a prototype, but they're expecting to start launching real Starlink satellites in the next few months. So I think there's supposed to be four Star Starlink launches before the end of this year. and Falcon 9, at least on the last launch, was able to do 60 Starlink satellites. The goal, if I remember correctly, is around 12,000 Starlink satellites. Putting Starship 2.0 aside, let's just go with the existing Starship that they're developing right now. Because it's so much more capable than Falcon 9, it might be reasonable to say, or it's just a guess really, but let's say that Starship is going to be able to launch 250 Starlink satellites in one launch. Well, then four launches would be 1,000. If the goal is to get 12,000 of them up, then that would be 48 launches. So that's a good start for how SpaceX would be using um, this, all these Raptor engines to power multiple Super Heavies and Starships to be able to get the Starlink network up. Uh, for those who don't know what the Starlink network is, it's a... Um, low Earth orbit network of satellites, or will be a low Earth orbit network of satellites that will be able to deliver high speed, high, high bandwidth internet with low latency, particularly valuable to people who don't have access to wired connections. They don't live in densely populated areas. So if you live in rural areas, if you're on a yacht, if you're on an airplane, if you're on a cruise ship, um, there's a lot of areas that don't have great internet service. And it doesn't have to be successful in cities if, if Starlink only serves 1% of the world population in the end. Well, that's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of customers. And I think that may be, uh, it may do better than that. It may serve 2 or 3% of the world population. And that is a huge uh, service and it is a huge amount of revenue for SpaceX, which can lead to funding for what Elon wants to do, which is to start establishing operations on the moon and on Mars. Um, one other point to consider, how do you use all these starships and super heavies? This is uh, from a conversation I had in the SpaceX Facebook group, SpaceX Facebook group, that um, when you're gonna do a launch to Mars, the idea right now for Starship One is you're gonna launch the Starship up and then you're gonna launch the, the crewed Starship is going to be launched and it's going to be refueled with tankers. So with tanker versions of Starships. So if you launch quickly multiple fuel tanker Starships to connect and, re and, and add more fuel to the one that's going to Mars, then the value of having multiple Starships with multiple groups of Raptor engines starts to make a lot more sense. So I think that's where we're going. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Please click subscribe, tell your friends about it, share this video, and keep waiting, keep, uh, keep your eyes open. I'm sure we'll have more videos coming. Thank you.